So in the beginning of the last game, we picked up with uh, most of you in the Sepulchre of the Locus Popolocus. And you all were, almost all of you were kind of standing around this this um, un, unlidded coffin, looking at ashes and, and bone and various bits of, of jewelry. Somewhere outside, off in the distance, Ares was slowly approaching kind of like the sinkhole in the ground. Um, and uh, Dr. Ford had this decrepit plant, this miserable little excusable plant in her hand. She attempted to uh, connect with it using her connection with her god Minersog. Um, but the first initial attempts to communicate with it, to connect with it, didn't render any results. Um, as a just a random thought, she grabbed some water out of her pocket, put just a few drops in her hand, and saw that the plant responded. This plant has been in this place for who knows how long. Um, the roots reacted to that little bit of moisture, moving closer toward it, and then within a few moments, it kind of sucked it up, keeping it quiet. She kind of packaged it as best she could, put it in her pocket, um, turns around and sees Shorty grabbing some bracers off of the body in the mm -hmm. coffin. Uh, you're looking around, puts them on, they look kind of big for him, but they're cool. Uh, Dr. Jones sees this and is like, oh, that necklace has my attention. Pulls the necklace. As soon as it comes up off the body, you hear <laughs> as little parts of the body start to knit back together. All of you standing kind of, I assume, somewhat transfixed as this, like this ancient corpse starts to unmelt thanks to Dr. Uh, Dr. Ford's excellent uh, adjective here starts to unmelt, starts to uh, almost like time is reversing itself. You see ligaments, tendons, uh, flesh start to materialize. In just another few moments, um, this corpse kind of sits up, mostly just bone, no soft tissues yet. Proceeds to get out of the coffin within the blink of an eye, goes from sitting in the coffin to standing just next to it. Um, and just another few moments later, it is a fully formed, fully fleshed elf-looking male with very pale skin and uh, and long hair and all the clothing that he had been wearing also restored itself to uh, a kind of primal like ancient beauty a very uh, intricate little carvings gemstones on every piece of jewelry every piece of jewelry almost every piece of jewelry on his body the necklace rings break well the bracers that that um shorty had um not just adorned with stones and intricate carvings but also giving off distinct arcane signatures thanks to dr ford's check on that dr jones's check on that um he looks around at all of you after a moment of pretending like you don't exist and he gives you all very cold stares uh dr Jones uh, is the first one to try to make contact, uh, asking for answers immediately. And, and the locus is uh, very, very blunt in responding that he owes no one anything, especially people who are grave robbers, as he sees Gulliver with the ax, Jones with the necklace, and Shorty with the bracers. And so in an attempt to make good, Jones and Shorty both kind of offer back the pieces that you have taken from him. He takes them back and then looks at Gulliver and summons his axe. Uh, Gulliver holding on to it very briefly, attempting to keep it, but um, after another pull, the axe was flying out of Gulliver's hand directly into the locuses. He stands there. He tried to have a little bit of a conversation with him, um, and he manages to get just a few words in before he says the fateful, uh, before I kill you line, which sends our wonderful Prendergast into a rage. He tries to attack, but um, he is too slow. And, and, and immediately, as soon as that moment of aggression is sparked, Thorokas crawls up the wall, flies across the coffin, um, landing directly on Shorty. Shorty and Thorokas uh, uh, fall prone. Thorokas plunging a syringe directly into Shorty's chest and starts extracting. Battle ensues, bats fly down from the ceiling and start harassing um, Ares and, and Dr. Ford. Shorty struggling to get this, this needle out of him. Dr. Jones makes an incredible 
firing shot right at the back of the locust. Bats fly down, take that first bullet, and then the second fire hits him, um, but it doesn't do too much damage. A few rounds later, and you've managed to get rid of all the bats, incredibly, and you um, you basically had him surrounded. Ares comes through with a series of incredible strikes, uh, and on the fourth one, manages to stun him. However, he's not about to just hang around and be beat by a bunch of lowly, lowly adventurers who should not have woken him up to begin with. And so with a mighty effort of, of sheer willpower, he breaks through the string, unlocking the, the key point in his shoulder that Ares had numbed for a moment, turns into a tiny bat, joins the swarm, and flies off. You hear, <laughs> I'll find you again as he flies away. Uh, and that leaves you all in this room a little worse for wear, a little beat up, a little expended on resources. You head back out into the main corridor. You are greeted by uh, by your little crabby friend who looks on with concern, asking about a swarm of bats that she saw pass by. You all tell her you have awoken the locus and she seems unhappy to hear this. It does not fall to her as good news. Um, but you decide that you're just going to keep going forward. You do uh, you do choose to take another short rest. You use various amounts of your hit die. You, I think, are all now back up to full. Please double check your character sheets. Uh, yeah, I was playing around with your tokens. So just double check that your tokens mirror your HP on on your character sheets. Because uh, I was I was I was playing around and, and I was playing with some of the tools there, so just double check that. But um, uh, and also you had you did take two points of damage during that hour of downtime where you were patching yourselves up and and reforming any any necessary equipment and stuff. So if we're and, if we're at full, we should take two. Um. Yeah. Did we take it like before or after? How do you want to calculate it? Um. So you will say like you took it as you were healing. So mm, we can mm-hmm. say that whatever you're at now is inclusive of the two points of damage. Okay. Um, I believe I left your tokens just as they were. So you guys can decide marching orders, mm-hmm. how you want to proceed, who's going to go first. Uh, we were heading south, right? That's where we agreed? Yeah, you're all yes. heading down. I also wanted to highlight just for a moment the mm-hmm. the little the wonderful conversation between all of you at the end when Doc, when Shorty pointed out the pulsing glyph. Doctor Ford took it upon herself to try to disband any potential uh, trap or or bomb or or trigger of that glyph, and in doing so, displayed a, 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 a for the second time in that room a mighty bout of of, of magical energy not to be outdone by Shorty's incredible firebolt. Um, and that that moment of healing energy got Octavia's interest and she started asking questions. And then Ford, uh, Dr. Ford uh, opened up and mentioned that he's connected to Ninersog. He is able to channel Ninersog's healing divine energy. And that's the power through which he is able to be a cleric. Um, Each of you taking this note in your own way, not really asking questions, but just kind of like pocketing them um, in your own way. And then, and now you're here. I just wanted to make sure that we remembered that little moment because I thought it was really nice. Yeah, Um, I thought about it a little bit. um, And I, I think Aries would be, since he's, he's, kind of like partially elemental, like elemental heritage. He kind of like understands that there is magic beyond just the material plane or the weave. There is this, the, the primal energies, the elemental energies, and then there's divine. So he goes, for him, it's like a little closer, but in a different way. So mm. for him, it's like, oh, it's safe here to, to do certain things uh, that would be looked up upon, I guess. So that's why with like just a silent nod, he kind of like without explaining, but in his head he's kind of like, Oh, that's different, but I, I, I know it. Oh. Cool. They're cool, they're cool. Um so yeah, give me marching orders, who's going first? Dr. Jones will go first. 
please do do your organization your magics here. I'll I'll bring up the rear of the group. Um, hey, although also because just to say it, I I am not up to full. Oh, okay, uh, I'm, I'm doing better than before, but I'm at like three quarters of my health, which is fine. Um, oh no, we're going this way then. Maybe this way? Mm-hmm. This way? Left side? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take up the back of the group. Because we came from over here. Mm-hmm. We came from Ares would stay to like front ish, not like leading the way, but kind of being like right behind or yeah. I don't know how to explain it. This is a kind of tight mm. space. The gold is space, good. I know I love the old recipe so much. Um, okay, you can open the door if you want. What does the door look it's like? <laughs> well, uh, the door like. opens without much issue. As you open it, you feel a, a, a no, gust of wind all kind of pass by you. Not not extremely forcefully or anything, but you all feel the air kind of flutter through your hair. It feels cooler than than the space that you're in now. Does it feel cooler than what we remember of the outside at this yeah, time well, of year? So the outside is uh, it's a tropical forest. It's kind of humid warm. and muggy. Um, this hallway has cooler, crisper air. Still damp, still kind of, uh, still poisonous, but cooler in temperature. As you step forward into the hallway, I assume you all kind of start going down the hall. Mm-hmm. As you start going down the hallway, you notice um, the hall. The hallway itself has a slight downward slope to it. After a few feet, you get to a set of stairs that det- descend, and you can feel cool air, almost as if someone's running an AC. You feel cool air kind of pumping up through the space. Smell the smell of of this kind of poison, this like subtle poison, which is almost, I want, it might smell almost like a little bit of like that kind of, you know how when you smell mint, it's, um, it has a little bit of a bite to it. I imagine the poison in this space has a similar kind of little bite to it. But by this point, Mm -hmm. you've breathed it long enough that it might almost be starting to fade into the back of your mind as you go through and you're more present, you're more thoughtful about this cool air. Um, But it also has um a scent to it uh like a slightly salty scent um you get to the bottom of the stairs and you're presented with another door before opening it dr jones just looks around to make sure everyone's here are we missing your pet companion oh yes you are sorry oh Mm -hmm. kitty Kitty kitty. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no, no. You unlocked something in my brain. I can't let it go now. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh no. I'm so sorry. I, ru- I ruined the game. I'm so sorry. Wait, what just happened? What is it? Yeah. She's a cat. She's a cat. No, no. He's like, he's like, I'm like, come here. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, where's my treat? No. Meow, meow, bitch. Meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. (laughs) Okay, wait. Okay. Yes, please. (laughs) Roll the dice. The dice is. 16. Okay, open the door. A good roll. Should Should we check for traps? Is that is that what you were doing? Uh, just rolling a survival check. So we don't uh, hang on a second. Room. Okay, as you walk in, you see that this room is muddy. It's got a muddy base layer similar to the one upstairs. You feel as you walk through, however, that unlike the mud upstairs, this room is cooler than the one upstairs, and the mud has almost like a slushy feel to it. As you step through, you can feel under your feet your that there's like a quite a bit of slip, and you get the impression that if you were trying to do any 
uh, any quick movements such as dashing, you might uh, you might slip and fall, aka difficult terrain. So just so that you're aware, there's a, the the floor is slushy, and the walls also have that kind of semi semi mucusy texture to it that was lining the halls of stairs. But again, everything is cooler here, colder here. Along the ceiling, you can see I can't remember stalactites or stalagmites, but you can see um, over many many years these little like these little like dripping stalactites. stalactites, icicles have formed along the ceiling. Uh, let me just double check that I haven't missed anything important. Is something paused that can't move? I would yeah, say I think... you to make sure that you don't do something that uh -huh. um, as written in the book, the room is wet, the walls are covered in slime, some uh, some sort of a white buildup. There's about an inch and a half of slushy, mudder, muddy water on the floor. Um, there are many pedestals along this room. Many of them are overturned. You see pieces of broken bits here and there. Uh, on the other side of the room, there is another door. Only one pedestal remains standing in the northwest corner. It sits on a small metallic three-sided trap pyramid Overhead in the shadow draped ceiling are inlaid um, colored tiles depicting a starry night sky and forming strange pattern in areas around the pedestals. <clears throat> and now, I unfreeze you. Yeah, so where was the last mm. pedestal? Um, one second. Uh, you guys are... Uh, there it goes. Hey, push in! I can't get in! Uh, the, uh... Pedal in this. So that'll be the first thing Dr. James notices and starts uh, walking towards. Let me just double check. Um... Oh, just for a second. As you all start walking around, start looking around the room, um, Jones, you kind of get to the center, you're looking around, you see the pedestal, that one pedestal that remains in the corner. Um, you suddenly hear something that sounds kind of wet and squishy from up ahead, from above you. And then you feel something hit your shoulder. I'm just going to... Hang on one second, I have to pull something up real quick. If it's gonna be oozes. Uh no bro, I'm a little more creative than that. You don't give me no credit. Uh <laughs> and then... uh you take two points of piercing damage as as you look on the floor. And sinking quickly back into the floor, you see what looks like a, a, like a, a potato-sized slug that looks almost identical to the eyeball that are on the ceiling. And you see, as it's sinking into the floor underneath your feet, you can see it has kind of like sharp talons on, on its face that are closing back up. And within the few moments that you see it sinking back in, um, it becomes invisible, like you can, it, it, like it hides back into the icy water. But it was definitely stuck on the ceiling and fell on you when you walked. You're talking about Doctor Jones. So yes, it Dr. Jones. fell on me, or it. It it's hard to say. It fell when you were there. I'm gonna move you for just a second. So I have that... a question. Yes. Um. Because I'm. I'm trying to uh, figure it out. Figure it out. What is it attracted to? Yeah. Does anyone carrying a light? What? Currently. Well, Jones is carrying a light. Yeah. He's carrying. Uh, I, I'm having dark vision, so I can't tell where the source of light is. I'm mm -hmm. carrying a torch. Okay. So, Doctor Jones carrying a torch. That's it. 
this this thing that just happened happened silently. He heard a little sculpting sound come from above him. And as he looked up, he saw something falling out of the darkness, hit him on the shoulder and keep falling up to the floor. Um, uh, however, Aries, from far away, from, from where you are in the room, I don't think you would have heard it. You wouldn't know about it until... Oh, Jones oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah, because it's, again, it's about the size of a potato, but it looks like, it looks almost identical to the icicles that are on the ceiling. So, mm -hmm. um, you would be looking around the room as well, you probably wouldn't see anything. Yeah, okay. So, just potato mouth spikes. Um... Plug, plug, sharp talons disappear in the mud. <laughs> That's I, what I can got. I investigate, can I investigate the stalagmites hanging down? In, yeah. To see if yeah. they look strange to me. I, I was going to ask if I can basically parkour my way up to look up higher, but. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Yeah. Jones, you just got a hit. Okay. <laughs> I just really want to know what this thing looks like. So okay. does it have like legs? No. Like, no. Okay. So just weird slug thing. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just missing one thing that I had in mind immediately. Okay. What did you have? I'm curious. Well, if it kind of looked like a spider, Jones would immediately like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. He, has a, he has issues Unload with his gun. Yeah. <laughs> one spider. Right. Does not have legs, so it's not. <laughs> so at this point, because he did take two points of damage. Uh, He's more of a kind of like in a stun mode and kind of like saw the creepy little face and then now he's looking in the shoulder to see what kind of damage is actually been done. Like, like a little like a scratch, kind of like like one of the claws that kind of almost a bit you just carved a little bit of a little bit of skin out. Okay, so a little trickle of blood comes down. Okay, at that point he's just like he says in a loud voice while trying to stay calm, but you can see he's a little disturbed. He's like, free one mind the ceiling and the floor? Because it's sunk in, so he's just like, uh. he, he doesn't like bugs in general. Yeah. Spiders are yeah. super trigger, but yeah. right now he's just like, yeah. Uh. Let me just double check one more thing. Show these guys his pants for a bit. Yeah, those little blanks, little trousers. That's right. Yeah. Sh sh yeah. Sh around with like little runners, jogger shorts. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. I gotta protect I the camera. Sure yeah. Okay, okay. So you say, mind the ceiling, Aries and Ford, who are very eager to do some investigating. What? Well, how do you respond? Yes. Uh, I mean, I freeze and look at the ceiling <laughs> with, <laughs> with a nature mind, because I figure it's some kind of creature that's crawling um, on the ceiling. Well, I've rolled. Since, since the, yeah, oh, you yeah. Oh, yeah. Just the light tights. Sorry, I went out of turn. No, no, there's no turn. What happened? Oh, I thought I thought there was a roll or something. No, um, uh, uh, Ford was asking what he what she sees when she looks at the ceiling, and I said she sees black tights. Okay. <laughs> Uh, how tall are the ceilings? Hi, those are vaulted ceilings. They're like, oh, okay, like 15, 20. Who's got Discord okay. on? Who's getting who's getting messages? Is that me? Not me. Somebody better mute. I don't think it's me. Does um, nobody text me? She will, at the advice. Even though she only sees stalagmites above, she'll hold her shield above her head uh, as a little cover or whatever, whatever might be up there. And she, but now she's looking at the floor. Does she see anything crawling around the floor? Um, no, not at this moment. In the you mud. Just, you, okay. Yeah, uh, Ford, how long are you standing in this moment in this in Jones? this area? Jones. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jones. Uh, how long are you standing there? At this point, he's just kind of like. He has still has the torture. He's just kind of like waving around the area where it disappeared. Uh -huh. And then he's going to slowly, like, you know, when you're just like doing those steps to make sure you don't step on anything. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. like slowly See? continuing towards the pillar. Just like, <laughs> uh, do you want to, um, 
Uh, I'm trying to think what you might roll to see how like because you're you're like you're moving your feet are basically entirely submerged with an inch and a half of like slush. You're like slushing around, right. and like little. There's also like little pieces of semi-solid, like I almost like icicles in there. Like again, it's like slushy material. Is that me? Is it my description? I don't know. That's, that's, um, that's really sure. I don't know. You that what did what? No, I I keep hearing Discord pop pings, and so I'm trying to. Uh... I didn't hear you. I heard them. I don't think it's me. Because I'm using headphones, but I could be wrong. So many. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, I was, th I was thinking to do some some parkour uh, along the walls, but then realized that's not my abilities. It's some different monk abilities. So I'm sad. <laughs> I wanted try. to run up the walls and be walls like, right. the the wall is covered in acid. If you touch the walls, you'll take acid damage. But Aries wasn't there when we figured that out. Oh, that's true. Oh, that never yeah, happened. That nice. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we explained that yet. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can say that you explained it during short rest, but let's do it in the game because that's funny. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are you doing? What are you guys doing? The map is unpaused. You may move your token wherever you want. Uh, yeah. I mean, Dr. Ford doesn't want to move an inch until she figures out what's going on. In fact, I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to crouch down. So how, how far into the mud do we sink as we step like is it above our ankles is it just like it's about ankle height let me just double check um is it knee height for yeah. sure basically um <laughs> an, an inch and a half of water so think like okay. Oh, okay um you hear, uh, there... you hear you hear um and you turn around and you see like Octavia's like kind of scratching her arm. I'm gonna move back into the doorway. Were you asking her what happened? Sure, yeah, that's what her. I don't know some fucking thing. Oh. I think whatever got something just like tried to bite me. She's like looking up at the ceiling, looking, looking down at the floor. She's like, I saw it just for a second, it looked like I had a slug or something, but like icy, I don't know. Do we just get out of this room? She looked she looked at Ford and she looks at Jones and goes, Is that what you saw? Did you see like it, yes, it, it it looked like a potato with a mouth. Yeah. Fuck. I hate this place. At that uh, description, do I recognize what that might be? It's a naturalist. <laughs> Very oh, very okay. Potato with a mouth. Ah, potato with a mouth. Like size of a potato, has a mouth, lives in caverns or underground regions. Would you say that those are those are terrains that you are deeply familiar with? That you I mean, have like a lot of experience with? I like dark like under dark caverns caves i mean she's not a ranger but she she has been to places like this before to look for magic items and things like that like this isn't her first rodeo but it's up to you but she stepped out of the room into the doorway because she's like i don't want yeah, things yeah. dropping off you mm -hmm. don't know what this is yeah i would say in this particular case um you're not you haven't heard anything like an icy potato with claw face <laughs> I have a different question in that case. What does the door look like on the other side of the room? I see there's a door. That was my question. Room. I was like, I probably yeah. would go investigate the door just to get uh, get out of here. No, yeah. I see you moved your token. Can you can you show me where you moved your token? Like what path you took to get here? Oh me? Me? Yeah. Um. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of traverse backwards. I think I went like this. Okay. Okay. Um, like along the wall. I was not touching the wall, but I was kind of like, okay, this is weird. Yeah. 
as you pass by the wall in this area here, mm -hmm. um, kind of in the vicinity of where Jones encountered his thing, you, you're walking around, you look, and you see emerging from the ice is this little creature that's slowly crawling its way. Oh, back up the back up the wall. You see it? it's just very mm. slowly starting um, to come out of the ice and it looks like it looks like an icicle that's moving, but it's got kind of like a it's got like a little little yeah yeah close down. You see like two little eyes are like flushed into the flesh of this creature. Yeah, and that, eyes. You know, oh no like rough a rough texture similar to that of like what you like a kind of bumpy and you just see it's just slowly minding its own business, just yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Dr. Jones and kind of like, well, because Aries trying to like, he, he doesn't talk as often um, as as me, Tammy does, but let's <laughs> we're just gonna, um, I would kind of like point, I, I would like poke you on the shoulder and, and point at the slug on the wall. Is that yeah. it? Well, it's going kind of slow, so it would still be just coming out of the ice. Yeah. Like, I was basically walking, keeping an eye on the slug and just walking into Dr. Jones to like, is that it? <laughs> it doesn't have legs, it doesn't have arms, it doesn't have any, it doesn't even have, like, body hair or anything like that. It looks like, like a, like a, a like a, like ice, like a ice muscle. It's just, like, slowly inching its way back up. The only thing you can see are two like kind of reflective eyes. Think like think like um, the eyes from this guy from Reddit. You know the the movie with those like reflective Mothman. eyes. No. No, no. like um, the 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 Vin Diesel movie. And oh, um, uh, Chronicles of Riddick. Chronicles right, of Riddick. right. Like you know how his yeah. eyes look dark. That's how this creature's eyes look as they reflect the light from your torch. And it's got mm. just these flat eyes. You see them like blink every once in a while, kind of like insect eyes. I want to poke it. A piercer. Poke it. So here's a question. I okay. want to poke it with my staff. <laughs> so it's going up the wall. Doesn't look like it's in the dress. And the wall is still covered in that creepy shit. Right. At that point, Jones is like, interesting. Poke. And you're still. What happened? Like, Crawling next you see this, Short like, sectors. immediately, like, it goes from being hunched, it, like, juts, snaps, and comes back. When you, when you try to poke at it, it tries to snap at you. It's not a fast-moving creature, either. So, the snap to someone with reflective skill, reflexive skills as, as nimble as yours, feels, like, slow. Like a normal, kind of, like, animal reacting to the thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you see it open. And, uh, and it looks like it that's it like basically took a little bite out of so, so watch of watching it really just like Johnny, go, 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 go. i'm gonna step aside for them to take a look <laughs> at whatever the, the thing is on the wall and the only thing that is fascinating it's not being hurt by the thwarts so Gulliver is going What's to try to use his knowledge of nature to figure out what this thing is. All right, that's nothing. That's a seven. Mm -hmm. it looks like some sort of prehistoric weird slug thing that that is indistinguishable from the Icicles and the stalactites in the ceiling. I don't Looks know. like it's some kind of weird prehistoric bug thing. Agree. Yeah, Some doctor, doctor. Prehistoric Dr. Ford, you're being summoned. Some sort of doctor. Um, <laughs> I'm fine over here. Do we need? Can we just move through this room? This seems like an unpleasant place. To spend our time. I agree. I, I do uh, want to investigate this pillar, but also, if we can figure out how that thing is doing, what it's doing, we might be able to avoid getting hurt by the walls. Wait, we can't get hurt by the walls? 
<laughs> yeah, the, oh, it's... the goop. It's all over oh, yes. the walls. The walls are covered in acid. Uh, mm. Let me look at this. And for it's going to make the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I already smoked poke the wall with a staff. Forward. You got to uh, test. I got to test this. Or you feel a little thunk, um, but it lands kind of on an area where you have a, a, a thicker piece of armor. Because I think you're wearing like leather and stuff, right? Like you're wearing. I am. And I still have my, shoulder, my shield over my head, okay, too. Okay, perfect. You feel a thunk hit the top of your shield. When you Ooh. pull your shield out to look at it, you see there is a, a small potato sized ice, ice slug on your shield. It is the the little hooks are kind of like hooked. They've dug themselves in a little bit into your shield with the with the velocity of this thing falling. It kind of like dug in deeper into the shield. And then it's just kind of like slumped off to the side. You see it starting to like contract its muscles as it starts trying its little its little teeth out of the wood of your shield. Mm. Pulls them out. And then it starts slowly inching its way toward the bottom of your shield. And yeah, she'll just say, there you are. And then can I, can I identify it now that I'm seeing it super up close or try to identify it? Uh, it looks like uh, a creature. Um, I mean, it's something I'm familiar with, especially because of the resistance to acid thing. Might be yeah, is what she's guessing. You see the it's moving. It's leaving a trail of slime. And that slime is starting to like eat away a little bit at your shield. Um, mm. but it, looks like, it looks like a creature called a piercer, which is just basically like a slug with a mouth. It just like falls from places and, oh. and eats and then goes back up and waits for the next person to go underneath and falls. My diagnosis is these creatures are better suited to this environment than us. So we should keep moving. But where is this pillar? Where is the pillar in the room, by the way? Oh, I'm right. standing by it. Oh, it was over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. She'll she'll politely let let the piercer down into the mud in the corner and then and then move her way over to Dr. Jones. You can't you can't be certain, but you feel a slight a slight energy of gratitude as it like slunks back into the ice. Aww. She doesn't like killing things if she doesn't have to. You know, this is, is this, so... really, this this is their little clubhouse. We're just storming through it. All right, Aries. Aries got the idea of like shielding, so he's like, next time, I, I like, he was thinking like maybe to to like rotate to spin the staff basically. Damn. But then, but then he was letting the creature go. He's he's kind of like, but that would kill it though. <laughs> so yeah. he's, he's, he's contemplating <laughs> his safety to like. That was nice, though. <laughs> I mean, that's that's up to your morals, you know. <laughs> that's why, like, he's not deciding where he stands with that. Um, but he's, like, more concerned with that door, though. Yeah. Door in the pedestal. <clears throat> uh, Professor, what do you think about this uh, pillar? And Gulliver is going to try to check it out and see what's up with it. I'm, I'm going to give you guidance. Sick. Ooh, I got twenty two without the guidance. Nice. Uh, um, Drop the guidance. Have twenty four. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, twenty four. Well, I just rolled a one on mine, but oh okay, we'll take twenty. 20 you're you're, you're investigating you the columns, right? You guys are all investigating mm -hmm. the columns. Um, that yeah. this, mm -hmm. um, I am. So what you see before you is like the one remaining. Um, actually. While I'm explaining this, um, Aries, will you please make a insight check for me? Um, so what you see before you, gentlemen, inside? Uh, okay. yeah, insight. Um, you see a small pyramid. It seems to be made of, of silver, um, although it looks a bit tarnished as the as the acidic moisture of the room has also settled on all of these things. Um, and you see, it looks like. It looks sort of like it, it has symbols of like a moon um, and uh, with some lightning in it. it. It's not it's not very large. Um, the in general, this area uh, just double check. Some.
Okay. Um, you rolled, what did you roll again? What was your rolling for? Uh, it was Arcana, and it was 23. And Ford, what did you roll for? Uh, the, uh, it was 22 on the d20 and then one on the d4. No, but for you also rolled it. It was for guidance. Yeah, so I looked up actually the my target of guidance rolls the d4, so you should take the one, not not what I rolled. So it's so it's 22 plus the one. Oh, I, I thought I thought, Ford, I thought you had rolled something separate. I just rolled a d4 because I thought I rolled the d4 for mm -hmm. guidance, but actually the target does. Okay. Um, as you're checking for Arcana, you don't feel any magical, any weave signatures off of this pyramid. However, um, Ares, what did you roll on your dice, on your inside? Who am I, am I doing inside for? Just roll. Just no, I it. did, but if I'm, if inside it's a body language read, though. Just roll. No, I what did, it's 11. Okay. Uh, just like, who am I taking inside for? I'm just curious. Uh, 11. Okay, so there's no magic um, from this, and what you see looks like a pyramid um, with, uh, with with something that looks kind of like a moon and lightning in in the kind of in inside the pyramid. You see what looks like uh, a, a a picture of like a moon with lightning. Jones, Shorty, what do you think? Shorty is wants to prepare an action. If one of them bugs come up fallen, uh -huh. he's a dodging. Okay. I know nice. this is un unsteady terrain. He tries best. He does not want that thing to land on him. I have some very important news for you. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot ready action that slow. Got it. Um, he is going to be just looking up. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you want like this? Yeah. He's like he's right next to Doctor Jones, kind of like you know he he feels that he's there, so you know he feels safe in that regard. But he wants mm -hmm. none of what's on the scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, can I do a? He, he just basically mm -hmm. does this to the ceiling. History check to see if I see any symbols around be beyond the uh, moon and lightning, any runes or anything. You don't see runes, but you do see more depictions of everyday life scenes similar to those little statues that you saw, those little like moments that you saw in the in the entryway. Mm -hmm. um, you see um, this little sanctuary. It looks like a little bit of a kind of like a fallen statuary, uh, and you see little stucco figures in the similar kind of Ottoman aesthetic. You see little warriors, peyote, a little crab head figure, a little alligator, feather warrior, little just little figures kind of in, etched into the sides of this thing. And is there any of the weird acid stuff on the pillar at all? Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. All the and the figures, everything that you see is kind of like worn away. Hmm. Um, Aries. As you're looking at this pillar and the statue, you get a sense that the statues and the pillars in the sanctuary that you were at were made of the same material mm. as, as this column. Okay. So I will turn to the group that I'm assuming like to the side, looking at all the signs and all of that stuff. So um, Iris will turn and say, I've seen this before. This, this column? Are these, are these depictions? This, well, not specifically the depictions, but the same type of material and statues in... Um, in one of the temples that I visited. Precisely the last one. Interesting. Like I think I think we close. Or at least this this is this looks like something of interest for sure. 
Mm. At this point, Joseph's um, up. Octavia. Yes. Did you get a drawing of this? How am I supposed to get a drawing if your big heads are in the way? <laughs> You're in so the way. Um, Literally, as like as all of your bodies are crowding around, and you turn around like, you see this? And she's there on the background, like, can I? No, see shit. <laughs> can I ask about the statues and the pillars? So, in the in the temple, I've seen basically also a statue on the pillar, and it was destroyed, and the stone was inside. Was it like in the top, on the bottom, and like in the base of a statue? Have I seen like? Anything else that like was sitting on a, on a on a pedestal very similar yeah. to this pedestal. And when they ruined it, stone came. Like, was it in the in the base? It was in, in the, the statue. In the in the statue itself. So not in the, on the pit. Okay. Right. But the like this that this column and the statue all are very similar to the ones that like same like same. Yeah. Style, that kind of stuff. Have I seen anything um, that the, oh my god, I forgot her name, but the master in that, in that temple, did she do anything of significance? Did she ever tell me anything of, about it? Um, no, I mean, you're only there for, for basically like a night. Yeah, no, I mean, like, maybe she said, like, in passing or, no, right? Okay. But you did see her tending to them, gently cleaning them and ma maintaining them. Mm-hmm. Everyone has stepped back. Mm. Not really. Uh, oh, Gulliver. Um, you feel a little kafunk as something hits your shoulder, um, but you don't take any damage. Ah! <laughs> Can I can I uh, look about, for something within about the room? This, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, could I look for something within the room? Um, yes. Doctor Doctor Four wants to look around because uh, scary man flew away as a bat, um, and so she's hyper aware of how flying things might move around this temple. So she wants mm -hmm. to look up into the corners, kind of all along the top rim of the room to be like, are there are there some holes, passageways, anything where... Yeah. She wants to know if, if we're on his trail or not, basically. Um, Did he go this way? Um, Did he go this way? Could he have gone this way? That is a dirty 20. As you're looking around the room, you see that uh, there are like there are support beams. The walls kind of have these like arching columns all the way up at the ceiling. And you see, as you're looking around, you do see a small bat perched in the corner watching you guys. Mm. Can I cast Speak with Animals? Yes, you can try. I want to talk to a bat. <laughs> uh, yeah. So she'll she'll grab her symbol as usual. Uh, I imagine when she used to speak with animals, there's a green glow that kind of goes from the amulet up to her throat, almost like it's affecting her vocal cords. Um, and you will hear bat sounds coming from her mouth, uh, but she will politely uh look up at the bat and say do i know you do you know us at this point uh as you say that octavia who is like kind of focusing in on sketching hears the bat screeching noises and like dumps him because uh, she turns around to see you <laughs> speaking in bat um yeah Aries is is like what <laughs> Gave y'all no warning. No warning. <laughs> <laughs> started doing this. You also don't know there's a bat on them. And exactly. Know this. Mm -hmm. right. so Jones is immediately his revolver's out while he's still holding lightly. <laughs> Sorry, I probably should have prepped y'all. Mm. Um, the bat. I don't know what the correct like screech, scroll, like I don't know what the right word is, but like Speaking. 
that doesn't respond. Just immediately, like, like, opens its wings and takes off and disappears into a darker space, a dark cavity of the space out of your line of sight. Hmm. I guess not. Anything She'll else? Say common. <laughs> um. No, I mean that was it. That's. I feel like it's a good enough an answer as any. Um. Probably just a bat who was surprised to be making a social interaction with a non-bat. Um, <laughs> and she'll look around to see everybody staring at her and go... Yeah, Aries oh. is not already trying to figure out if he knows how to make a bat out of origami. <laughs> like, oh, he, she talks like there a was, bat. There was a... Uh, there was a bat, and I... I'm wondering if that cursed man thing is following us. But it, it doesn't seem to be so. Sorry, I probably should have said I can do that. That that you okay. do sometimes you just gotta act. Yeah. Didn't want him watching us if he was him. If anything, I wanted to resolve that quickly. So uh bye on our team. Mm. Do, do we have reason to believe that these gems that were in the other pillars are important somehow? Well, do... Cub, Cub, I wanted to say Kibop again. <laughs> <laughs> the Cabal took it from the temple where I was before, and this could be another one that they're looking for. So, yeah. Except for one, though, they couldn't get this one? Well, they are on the way here. Oh. I came here because... I mean, I don't even know what I'm looking for. I just know that... I was asked to to, to come here before the Cabal does. Well, and but I was wondering... Who, who destroyed the other pillars in this room? And why? Coming from that sense, you get you can you can see the acid and general like the room is just kind of as is most of the rest of this. And this is also something it's actually good to find a reminder: the entire state of this shrine that you're in is in disrepair. Like mm. the infrastructure shows mm -hmm. cracks and and chips. Uh, again, like any any walls that are stucco. Are totally saturated in water you can just like slosh off chunks of stucco um, yeah yeah and so if, if you were if you're of a more paranoid mind you could lean into the idea that perhaps somebody came and destroyed these things however it looks like this is all broken due to time yeah. moisture bad housekeeping animals burrowing into things things of that nature um but like you like just looking around as you walk through. You do get the sense that like a powerful, like a like a like spell, like large areas effect spell might bring a whole chunk of the room down. Like occasionally you'll even hear like little like little sips of dust falling, little cracks or like little rocks might fall down randomly. Um, this place is. I mean, you fell because you in this place because a whole chunk of the ceiling just totally collapsed in. This place is not in good spirits. Not in good shape. Before my speed. Oh, wait. Was somebody else talking? Oh, I think I'm hearing myself. Yeah, it's an echo. There's a bit of an echo through. No, I think yeah. you and, and, and Jones were also saying yeah. the same thing at the same time. No, Dr. Jones is just like, it's probably time to go. As you look at the door that is on the other side of the room, you see two things. One, you see a lot of the moisture, a lot of the, the water. You see there's a steady stream of water flowing out under the door. Mm -hmm. And as you check the door, you see that it is locked. The door we just came into? No, the next door. What's the door made out of? I'm now getting an echo. But was the pillar here, or where? I thought it was here. I mean, I'm not hearing any echoes. Are you hearing an echo? 
Last Check, one. Checking Good. for an echo. Checking echo, for echo an echo. Test. Beep. It just test. sometimes comes, sometimes it doesn't. It's weird. Ah, uh, Discord. Ah, uh, Discord. Um, yeah. Did you say water was coming out from under the door into this room? No, the room that you're in now has an inch, or, an inch and a half of like muddy, muddy ice right. water. Right, and it's going and under you know the door. You're breaking down under uh, the door. Interesting. Whatever it's beyond. Mm. Um, the door, this door looks similar to the other doors that you've seen. We can, unless I mention otherwise, you can just assume that the doors that you're passing, either locked or unlocked, are kind of bronze in nature. Although at this point, they might be green from Rust. nickel, rust, that kind of thing. Um, Ornate, but not terribly fancy. Tough to break down, though. I don't know. Try. Back into is it. there a lock? It is locked. So yeah, there is a lock. Is there a lock? Yeah. All right. Gulliver um, is going to check? break that lock. Try to just give it a good, you know, shoulder. To try to okay. knock it open, um, I guess that would be like athletics. Well, yeah, but you also have to get there first. There's like half an army of PCs in front of you. Some people have to. Oh yeah, yeah, I was gonna just, you know. I was gonna like, try to pick a lock. Uh, Aries, as you step. Oh, if you're about leg, to do that, you feel you something see hit that. the top part of your arm. And another one of these slugs takes a little bite out of you. You take four points of piercing damage. Really? As it like gotcha. gets a, like an un, un, uh, like kind of like unprotected creep, yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, I could try to break it down unless somebody's got a more elegant solution. Because I don't know, I'm tired. After John, mm. as you take that step to the side, you feel something hit, um, maybe like another part of you, but like uh, like kind of like maybe like on your butt or the back of your leg or your shoe. Uh, but it hits a part that you're covered, and you don't take it. Uh. Well, I wanna. I realize that I don't have a like a lock pick, but I do have some things that I could try to lock pick with. Hmm. Okay, what you got? I mean, oh, does someone else have the a lock leather? Pick? The leather work tool, so there is like the needles oh, and stuff, uh... and the little like a uh, hole puncher. So I was thinking to try to use that. Try to unlock it. You look at you look at Shorty, and uh, he's still looking up. But uh, he realizes everybody's trying to assess what they can do to get this door open. And you see the, the crowbar come up and he's just holding it up. <laughs> yeah, the crowbar. <laughs> Eric doesn't see it. He's trying He's trying to do something. Uh, you, you, pull out your, your, you pull out your, your Leatherman tool, uh, but you look at, as you as you kind of put the, the, the leather punch tool and the owl by the hole, you see that. All these things are kind of too big to get the job done. They don't fit into the little hole that uh, like a, okay. a, a tool would need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's like, he's like, next time I'm in town, I need to get these tools. <laughs> like he's just, he's making like a shopping list. Like these tools, yeah. shield to protect against falling bugs. Yeah, like he's just like, shit, I'm so unprepared. I need more paper for my origami. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> 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 He didn't know he was meeting a party. He's just like, I'm so unprepared for this. While all this is happening, uh -huh. Dr. Jones is just looking at the door. Can I do a history check to see if there's any symbols, anything on it? Yeah, uh, okay. but I, I, I'll tell you that. Do I see if it's covered in that green gooky stuff as well? Everything is covered in the But I covered code. Any physical contact will cause one point of estimate. Okay. I guess someone can try to pick it. But I'm like, well, the way I imagined it, she kind of like held her weapon, like her tools up to it to see if it would fit, if it would even work. I was about to, and I realized it doesn't even, it's not going to even work. Like, like, the, the, the hole punch is this big and the key lock is much smaller, and you're like, oh, I, I thought it could work, but maybe not. Um, so, uh, Pondra Gas, are you just going to give it the whole shoulder one, two? Yeah. Oh, that might hurt. <laughs> Smack. You do it back in or uh, uh, putting a protection on? Protection run? What did you say? Are you going to try to cover yourself at all? Because it's covered in yeah. acid. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to 
Um, shield? Do you have a shield? Could use no, mine. actually. I'll, Dr. I'll Ford use, will offer you a shield. I'll use Dr. Ford's shield yeah, as, a, as a umbrella. Device. I know. And then uh, give it a shot. Make that good, good strength check. I'd like to think she she taps you on the shoulder before you do it. Seven. Hands your shoulder and says, use protection. And hands it to you. <laughs> <laughs> like, eh, cool. <laughs> speed. Yes. Um, seven plus guidance? Live for fun. No, guidance? seven total. Yeah, you, you use your guidance. Oh, I thought you were, I thought you were passing guidance. All right, it's ten. Yeah. Ten total. Yeah, ten's ten, good. Ten, seven. You unlock. You managed to unlock it just a little bit. Fight um, myself, yeah. Uh, you you kind of like jostle it, and and with just like just a normal bump, you kind of feel like the hardware from this doorknob, uh, almost like comes undone. It's like all old and rickety mm. and, and and rusted, and so it's just like it's it's more so like the door has swollen into place. And that what was um, locking it more so than the lock itself. Uh-huh. But the one up wasn't turning, but like the good, the shoulder chug kind of managed. lost it into place. Yes. Yeah. So you managed to open the door. Bust it. As you open the door, uh, a, a thicker stream of water starts to flow down. Again, you notice that the, the floor here seems to be downward sloping. Um, the hallways here uh, have a very similar nature. The walls and ceiling of this hallway are coated with slime, and the floor of the passage is covered with a layer of mud, similar to uh, what you've been experiencing. Uh, Though uh, through this muck, a steady stream of water trickles northward. The stucco on the walls is flaking off, and there are glowing silver tracks in the slime crisscrossing the wall's ceiling. Along the east wall of the passage stands a 12-foot tall stone statue, which you see as you kind of come down and round the corner. Um, the statue is of a man outlined in fine clothing and holding a stone tray in a um, in his raised arms. His eyes appear to be black gemstones. The right one droops out of its socket, balancing on the statue's cheek. From behind the left shoulder protrudes the hilt of a weapon most likely a sword. The stone tray as well is, um, as well as the forehead and the nose of the statue are chipped and scraped. Do I recognize him? Or her? Or them? You can make some, so the statue is here. Oh, okay. So. Also, the statue that you were mentioning, with where was it in the room? Hmm? I thought I thought it was by the door. It was the statue that I saw that's similar to the one then in the temple? Was it like by the door or? It was in the corner where I was standing. Yeah. Ah. Okay. It was on the pedestal, right? There was pedestal mm-hmm. and statue on top yeah, of it. Yeah. Let me pull up. I will share to you. Uh, an image of this statue. Just give me one moment. Oh, very nice. Cool. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. I did just do an accidental Borat. Good nice. My wife. King of the castle. <laughs> They're very accidental at this point. <laughs> That's, yeah, it's clearly crossed beyond that now, but we're here now. Hard to avoid. <laughs> it happened, and we can't deny it. Mm hmm. <laughs> you should not have <laughs> You should all be able to see an image, hopefully. Ooh. Uh, oh, hello. Yeah. Very nice. Uh well That's the however... one with the red marked with the star? Yeah. Yeah, that's that is so cool. I want to take a few minutes just to reiterate how much I'm enjoying playing with you guys. Thank you for being amazing and taking my little piercer damage. Um, Quick question yeah. about the statue because it keeps bugging me. It keeps bugging me because you said, like, oh, you remember it. It was the same thing. <laughs> what? Uh-huh. 
So I, oh, I don't oh. want to like travert all the way back, but I want to get a sense of like, does it look the same kind of like, would it be worship? Like, was it in a place? Was it like significant enough? Was it like the, was it like adorned the same way? Would it be like the same kind of significance? Yeah, so in the room, in the, in the sanctuary, mm -hmm. so I think I mentioned that they were like pillars and that they were they were destroying the place. Yeah. Now, this place also had multiple pillars. You just built it? That were destroyed. Yeah, but Destroyed. it's not likely these were destroyed in that same malicious manner. By no, no, no. I'm just getting, a, I'm just kind of like yeah. trying to paint a picture in my head. So... Yeah. We walk into the room, pillars like all over, and then one of them still has a statue. Is that what it is? Yes. Mm -hmm. One of them in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. And so when the cabal was destroying the temple, the stone fell out of the statue, not the pillar. So it looks like this statue could have it. Is that what like I'm trying to? Is that what I'm sensing? Like, would I? Would I want to to try to get the stone out of it? I don't know. Would you? I can't tell. Me. I can't say that. I can only tell you what you see. I can't tell you what you want to do. Mm. Well, I guess my question was like, would it look like so? Because it is that it does look exactly the same, but it's not. Is it? It's not the same statue. It is not. It is not the same statue, no. But it you can. It looks like it in was in the same uh, manner. Like it's from the same collection. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Fuck. I want to go back. Huh? They're both by Christian Dior or Michelangelo. <laughs> it's a uh, spring summer twenty twenty four. Um, okay. I will refrain, I will reread this. Um, uh, the walls and ceiling of the hallway are coated with slime and the floor of the passage is covered with a layer of uh, slushy mud. Through, um, through the muck is a steady stream of, oh, of cold uh, water trickles northward. The stucco on the walls is flaking off, and there are glowing silver tracks uh, that line crisscrossing the walls and the ceiling. Along the east wall of the passage stands a 12-foot-tall sto stone statue of a man outfitted in fine clothing and holding a stone tray in, in his raised arms. Its eyes appear to be of black gemstone. The right one droops out of the socket balancing on the stones on the statue's cheek. From behind the left shoulder protrudes the hilt of a weapon, most likely a sword. The stone tray, as well as the forehead and the nose of the statue are chipped and scratched. And that is what you all see. Okay, well now, what you're basically saying is the statue has the force with a cry. A what? <laughs> you know the force with a cry? Forrest Whitaker has uh, two eyes with completely Everybody. different appearances. Everybody knows the Forrest Whitaker eye. What is... Do this to me. Is this how it gets cancelled? Maybe. I mean, everybody... But the hand brought... One moves in a different direction. Yeah. Gulliver is going to use Detect Magic. Mm -hmm. Or whatever it's called with the Barbarian. Yeah, magic awareness. I become aware of the presence of any concentrated magic, uh, any spell or magic item within 60 feet that isn't behind total cover, <laughs> and which school of magic it belongs to. Um, the statue is... It's not really giving off any arcana. Um, we'll say that the, mm, 
It's not just Arcana, though. Then what is it? Besides, what is it? Any, any magic device, any, magic. Any spell or yeah, any spell mm -hmm. or magical oh. item. I guess. I guess maybe that's Arcana. <laughs> Well, you kind of, you will see invisible, like if somebody uh, is invisible, you can see any magical item glowing, you can tell what school of magic I think it's also, right? Yeah. Yeah. Any magical effect, basically. Mm -hmm. Within range. Yeah. I remember. There... <clears throat> a little tricky based on how this is all described in here um there is nothing there is nothing strictly magical in nature but the sword does give off a very 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 mild um energy a, a very mild energy pulse not not necessarily magic in nature but it's not mundane either it isn't the same material as the statue hey uh something's up with the sword I'm not sure what do we want to try to take it pull it out oh i'm thinking the statue six feet tall Statue is. Let me double check. That was twelve feet. <clears throat> was it twelve? Twelve foot tall. The statue is twelve feet. And as you see on its back, you can see that there is kind of like a sword sticking out there. This will help. Um, can do I? Do we want to check the sword up close, maybe? Yeah. I can try to climb it and. Try it out. We should probably check if it's trapped. I imagine hmm. it's a tempting thing for someone to grab. Mm. Okay. Well, I want to then climb it and investigate it. <laughs> I want to do something. Yeah. Let's investigate it up close. The sword's not 12 feet up, right? Like, it's, I mean, it's on his shoulder, but the sword's maybe 10 feet Behind up. Behind right? him, so like 10 feet, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, I kind of want to climb climb the statue and try to take a closer look. Okay. Um, uh, one moment, let me just double check something. Mm, make, uh, so you climb up, um, you can, I would say I don't think you really need to make a dexterity check because this is your bag. Like, there's nothing <laughs> wrong going on here. There's nothing like that okay. you're trying to avoid. You managed to seems very nearly. Dirty. <laughs> huh? It seems sturdy. You manage to to, to kind of like do a little parkour bounce off the walls. You land on the open tray. Uh, do I see anything written on it? The tray doesn't have anything written on it. Huh? The moment you land with your full weight on the tray. Uh, all of you here, like, uh, yeah, I would like you to make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> oh, let's oh, go. Okay. That's, that's my forte. Oh. That's something's happening. 13. What? 13? 13. One, three. Um, as soon as you land, you all hear a mighty crack. And within a few moments, the, the, the statue starts to lie, to, to lean sideways in the direction in, in, in where where Ares' weight is most prevalent. Um, Ares, you try to, to hop off, but you your foot slides off of the stucco and the slime on the walls. You lose your footing and you take three points of bludgeoning damage as you fall tumbling down to the floor with the statue. I have and... slow fall, so I can take... I basically don't take full damage up to 25 hit points. Okay. So you take one point of bludgeoning damage. No, I nullify I it. Up oh, to 25. perfect. So, so yeah, you... I can basically fall off the ground, and if it's like, over 25, then I start taking damage. Oh, perfect. So basically, you, I parkour as, as I fall. Yeah, you, you try to, 
you try to uh, to land. You don't stick the land, but you manage to roll off the fall, and you kind of pop up a few feet yeah. away. Yeah. Sounds about right. There's no <laughs> You see, the statue is now kind of face down. The tray is is ruined. The statue is kind of broken into three main chunks. And where the statue was in the wall, you see there is a hallway behind the statue. So I look at the hallway. I look at the sword. I look at the group. Do we still want to take a look at the sword? <laughs> I still want to take a look at it. Uh, she'll, she'll get in close on the sword. I'll just be, like, right taking. behind you, like, let's take a look together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does it look worth taking? It looks nice. But it's huge. It's not, I mean, to you, to you. Yeah. Sure, he's going to um, try to take it. Can we investigate it if it's yeah, trapped it. on the yeah. statue? Yeah, now that it's laying down, can we see yeah. the whole sword? Is it in a, is it in a spot? The sword is in, in the scabbard, which is part of the stone structure. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does it seem like there's, I want to investigate if it looks like there's like a seal or a, or a string or like anything mm -hmm. that's waiting for somebody to pull this out and set off a trap. As you move in close to try to take a look at it, you see thrusting into your field of view, Shorty's hands as he goes to pull it back. Um, <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's a proximity trigger. It's like, that's too high tech. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you see, he starts pulling, and then Shorty, you'd have to take a few steps back yeah. as you unsheathe this very long sword. So, I like how, just I hear her uncontrollably. Aerie, yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine, like, basically the statue falling, right? This is the, the sword is this way. Me, me, me and Dr. Ford are just, like, looking at the side at the seam, and we just see the hand, like, so basically we're looking at it, and we just see the hand grabbing and pulling it off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You just hear Doctor Fargo. Wait, 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 We don't. We don't. Oh well. Can you well, pick We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> she's not gonna. She's not gonna touch it. Um. <laughs> My strength is. I got you right here. Your strength is plus one. Yeah, you can pick it up. Yeah. Oh, well, you got a decent strength. Right? Ten is average. You're about. You're good. Yeah. So you see. You see Shorty. You see a stout halfling. Pull the sword. Looking at it. Oh, shimmy. Yeah. How big is the sword? Is it like shorty and taller? Or like how tall? How big is the sword? It's a long sword. It's a long sword. Long swords. That's like four feet tall, four feet long, typically. Jesus Christ. How big is that? It's going to go above his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just imagine like shorty and then the sword is basically like this. Like that? No, that? You have a long sword on your party now. Yeah. What do you do with it? You gonna try to put it in your pocket? <laughs> in my little pocket. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I put it in my pocket. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 But it ends up finally as it like as the oh, metal like hits the wall and it starts vibrating. Octavia actually has to make a fucking dex check because you yeah she fucking like takes that side of the way really quickly and um and she manages to like she slips but she catches herself and she goes what were you sticking that thing? Jesus, she's, she's gonna hold on to the sword for now. Yeah. Okay. Shorty's up for the challenge. Okay. <laughs> she'll she'll look you dead in the <laughs> eye. <laughs> Doctor Doctor Ford will look you dead in the eye and and hold up her healer's like medic kit, pick it up off her hip and go, I only have so much of this. And put it back at <laughs> <in> her hip. <laughs> and uh and she's in 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 frustration will actually walk right into the hallway. <laughs> That's Wait one moment. Hmm? I've been waiting for everyone to stop talking before everyone walks in there. Okay. And Dr. Jones has been paying no mind to all this stuff. Mm -hmm. He's been like, <laughs> only saw the Amazing. silver tracks. That's him is like, silver tracks. Any kind of tracks walking in the wall. He's like, that's awesome. He's right now paranoid. And he's checking to see, can I roll an inside check? Those tracks lead towards that hallway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Correct. Oh, the silver tracks. Right. Dr. Ford thinks that's just more slugs. 
but you could be mm-hmm. wrong. Is it like silver, silver? Like it's like metallic, or it's it's um or like pearlescent? The, the, the the... Silver tracks are inlaid into the stone, and it's only the because it's slightly reflecting the light from Jones's porch that you're able to see them. And so, as you guys were looking around, he was he kind of spotted this. So, I mean, they were available to everyone to see, but it depends on whether or not you were looking okay. for them. Um, mm-hmm. These these silver lines actually don't go into the hallway. They continue forward into the doors on the other side mm-hmm. of the hallway. Yes. These guys right here. Mm-hmm. So Jones is just going to literally be like kind of staring at the, the doors. So he, he will not interfere with. It. Okay. So you're just gonna, uh, for you're just gonna start walking down the hallway. So she'll, she'll let uh, Doctor John say, "May, may I continue?" At, at that point, he's like, uh-huh, uh, y- y- "Yes, yes, yes." He continues to look at those other doors. The doors. So these doors are more ornate. They look very similar to the doors that um, that you were that were just before the room of the sepulchre. They were they're slightly more ornate. Um, actually, let me double check something real quick. Uh, a very skinny hallway. Yeah. Yeah, uh, if it's this, a hallway, hallway that's in. This hallway has a slight upward slope to it. Um, uh, it is upward. Cool. All of this area down here is cooler than the the cat the rooms upstairs. Um, but it looks there's no there you see less buildup of slime here. The statue mm-hmm. is doing the job of keeping the moisture and the poison air and all of that stuff out of this little corridor. It looks a little safer than the main hallway, the main area. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to double check something really quickly. Mm-hmm. Think about that. I just wanted to double check something okay no okay you're great never mind um so yeah so ford you're going up the hallway you may mm-hmm. proceed with it as you wish cool uh hold on i want to check something is light a concentration spell it's not that means i can do it a bunch so i'm gonna pull out because now i'm kind of separate and i have dark vision but eh, i want to see colors so she'll pull out she has a torch in her own pack and she'll light it up with light a light spell so i have some on my own light wait so you have light on the torch do you cast light on the torch i love it you literally don't cast light on anything but you pulled out a torch, you pulled out you out a torch light. <laughs> it's a smokeless like on a bracelet on the something so you don't have to carry no no i'll get a torch <laughs> it's it. symbolic it's, not even it's a smokeless any- torch because we don't know what that gas will do oh that's right good point and then she could throw it, maybe, you know, if she wants to see mm-hmm. it somewhere. Uh, but yeah, so she'll be on there. And she'll continue. I mean, any, as I'm walking, are there any, like, any signs of activity down here? Or does it feel just pretty spotless? It's pretty, it's pretty quiet. It's pretty clean. It's undisturbed. No what, uh, what's down this way? Aries definitely, like, being like basically right right next to you like trying to like keep an eye on everything um mm-hmm. Aaron, will you make a perception check for me absolutely i'm gonna stop moving no i don't like you dice you've been <laughs> bad to me you've been bad to me i'm switching you yeah, switch. you rolled off you rolled off five on dexterity 20. <gasps> what is my perception plus three 23. crit Crit, 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 crit. Beautiful. I crit a little. As you are, um, as you're walking, you get a sense that something is behind you. You turn and you see Octavia is directly behind you. And when you turn to look at her, she goes, shit, I was trying to sneak up on you. <laughs> um, I just, I just give like, I give like, you know, like just one okay. little corner smirk. Like I'm trying not to smile, kind of like smirk and just like a nod and then turn around. <laughs> Okay, she still put glints in her eyes. She goes, "You're good." 
<laughs> I love it. I'm accepted. I love this little dude. <laughs> Um, so what's at the end of the tunnel here? You see a door. Oh. Yes. Ford and Shorty. I mean, Jones and Shorty, what are you guys doing? So, I see you both stand behind. And, and Gulliver as well. Well, Jones is looking at the door. Mm -hmm. He looks at Shorty. He's like, keep an eye out on the tunnel in case they need us. And that's when he first, like, he's totally been fixated. He notices the sword. Yes, if need be, hit something with that. <laughs> to the door. Nice. Nice. Okay. It looks again very similar to the door that was just just for the for the, the doors to the room of the sepulchre of uh, the locus. Can I do like a history for checking for symbols? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Fourteen. You see that the, the the there is more cool air. You can feel kind of cool air coming. What shoes are you wearing? Are you wearing what? Um, those kind of like leather adventurer boots. I don't think they would be waterproof. So then your your slo your soggy shoes are feeling a little bit more cold as the cold air draft kind of comes up through the bottom of the door. You see. As you're looking very close, these are identical to the doors of the sepulchre. So it's likely that this might also be some sort of a uh, an important room as well. And of course, Jones's initial thought is, "We want trains by the door." In fact, that's exactly what Doctor Ford is doing too. In the in the other room, she's doing the exact same thing, yeah. looking above the door. Mm -hmm. For something shiny to fall on her and knock her out again. <laughs> you don't, you don't see any indications of a trap. Um, the back of the door looks very uh, basic, very, very normal, very like void of any details or anything. Um, your doors. Um, the doors are bronze. They're tinted blue from oxidation. That's from what you can tell on the outside. You don't see any sign of traps. Is there a handle door now? Yes. The oh. kind of almond shaped doors and doorknobs of old with the little intricate carvings. Yeah, we'll just check to see if it's locked or not. It is not locked. How about our door? Your door is not locked either. Immediately he back. He looks at uh Gulliver, he's like Come. All right, Professor. Then he just starts uh, he takes out his pipe and he starts thinking shouldn't go in without the entire party. He looks at Shorty. How are they doing? Everyone is the same. They're fine. I protect them with the sword. <laughs> okay. I believe it. We will head in their direction before we open these doors. We're going to start heading that way. Okay. Ford, are you opening your door? She'll so like turn around to her shadows and say, Shall I try it? Look for nods or head shakes. Did we miss the game for traps or did we didn't? Did we check it for traps? Yeah, did we check it for traps? I looked at I looked at everyone. She said there was none. Yeah, there's not. Okay. Um I will try the doorknob. Do you want me to try? Um, no, I, I feel good about this one. Okay. Because I was kind of like, I would rather be ahead and look with a quick reflexes to be maybe 
able mm. to like avoid whatever if it's gonna come. So that's kind of like what he's offering. At that offer, Doctor Ford will will trade places with you. Uh, <laughs> awkwardly through the hallway, get behind you. No, I, I just I just basically like the moment you step a little bit away from the door, I kind of like jump over you. <laughs> yeah, perfect. That's how I see it. Like I'll just parkour off the wall. Well, no, I won't because it's covered and stuff. But cool. yeah, I was kind of just uh, somersault it. Parkour, parkour, acid damage to your parkour, parkour. I always parkour, parkour. Just, just to say like and how and then, do you how do you get it? How do you get to it? I'm like I'm parkour again. Yeah. Parkour yeah. Again. Your parkour becomes like then you get acid burn on on your heel and now you have to walk on that. Yeah. So it's Let's see. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm basically getting all my all my reflexes, like all my muscles are just like springs. I'm ready to jump off if anything. Like I'm out of there. I love how tense you guys are. It's wonderful. Huh? I love how tense you guys are. It's wonderful. It oh, yeah, no, I'm, like, like physically, like, I'm we're, comfortable. We're literally yes. walking through the room like we're on. We'll shower, like... <laughs> exactly. Or lives her Ooh. life on stress. Okay, so I see something. Is there something on the floor? Yes, there is. There is more water trickling down on the floor. And then past the door that's just across the hall from you. Mm. Where's the water coming from? Oh, okay. So, is, so is it a... I kind of like peek in and trying to like, yeah, so there's more water, another door. You see up ahead as you look up the hallway, you see a, a kind of a pool, like a puddle of water collecting from which this little riverlet seems to be flowing consistently. And you can see that the water, the pool of water that you see up ahead is a, a collection of essentially like the, the, the uh, condensation of the moisture in the space in, in this general kind of hallway it seems to be collecting in an area where the floor has sunken down a little bit. And, and, now, uh, and then there's like a little river coming down uh, generally speaking, the, the floor is sloping just slightly upward from where you are toward the doors at the far end of the hallway. And then in addition to those, there is this door that's just across the hall here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Too many doors, guys. Mm, yeah, tempted to just choose one at random, to be honest. <laughs> okay. There is a lot to Hey, uh, you think we should choose one at random? No. Can we roll for it. <laughs> uh, Are we rolling for the nope. door? <laughs> unless, unless one seems obvious, and none ever do. So. Are they different Safe. from the ones that we saw at the statues? One moment. One moment. Hang on a second. Don't move anywhere. Let me double check something. They're pretty yeah, close. What, what they look like is key. I think we have to judge by like what they look like. Yeah. You go, you go in your innate golden door, and I'll go down this trash chute. <laughs> the, <text, laughs> okay. um, the passage is slime covered, and a stream of water trickles away from, uh, from, uh, away from the door at the far end. There is condensation on the walls, doors, and ceiling of which drips down on you. So occasionally, all of you are feeling little splashes of water. Um, a sound of dripping and splashing echoes in the corridor. Uh, the door ahead of you seems tightly sealed. Appears to be warping outward slightly. Mm. Mm. Yes. It's never a good sign. Yeah. Like, um, mm. is there any water coming from like underneath that door? From which door? The one that's warping towards. No, that's where you see the water kind of like you see it pooled a little bit on the floor. It's coming out of this the door. Was, the question was: Do we see? Does he see water coming from the door that's warping? The door that's warping is this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Is it actually? Is it 
warping out toward I'm us? Gonna change, I'm going to change the description a little bit. Okay. The door is not is not warping, but you see heavy, heavy signs of water damage. Uh, it is not. It's not. It's not pushing out. It is bloated. Uh, but you do see, as the picture shows, you do see water flowing into this room here. Sure. How high up does the water damage go? Uh, of the door, pretty high. Yeah, like all the way up. Almost, almost halfway up. Yeah. How tall is the door? It's taller, relative to us. Mm. Like, does is that above head height? Yes. For well, all no. Of us? I would say it's like maybe shoulder height. If, well, shoulder height for someone who is normal, normal human height, basically. If we take. Yeah, yeah. I just remembered. I'm I'm tall, aren't I? <laughs> I think I made me. I'm not That's tall, great. but I I think Doctor Ford is tall. She's like seven feet something. Holy Where did you even find that? Description. I, I made her I six five. Okay. Races never really have that height ranges, and then you can assign how high you are, how tall you are within that range. Mm -hmm. Well, she's an elf. Yeah. She's an elf. Elves, elves, elves tend to be yeah, elves, high. Elves, elves tend to be taller. Story. Yeah, she's six five. Cool. Oh, so I'm basically like at your shoulder. Like... <laughs> everyone looks up at yeah, so Everyone, up. everyone is just like she's kind of lanky. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. You've got choices to make, clubs. What do you want to do? You got a couple of doors. Okay. So the water damage door. How do these doors look like? I wanna, I wanna go check it. Which one? I have to do a like thorough <laughs> check. What do uh... these doors look like? That one looks water damage. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I don't like water. Okay, this is the correct path. This is the correct paragraph for this hallway. Um, the okay. hall is strewn with mud and flotsam. Water accumulates in the center of the corridor and flows westward to where a stone block in the south wall has shifted out of place. The corridor turns north, does it? Mm -hmm. no. um, and the flow of water follows it. It then goes under a door made of bronze bound wood. Oh, I think that's the one we were just in with the. Right. Oh. Um, yeah, because that's south. What about the north doors? Are you there presently? No, you're... Yes. Yes, I see you. Yeah. Make a... Where is this? Uh... Oh! Uh -oh. oh, I Oop. didn't click stuff. I didn't want to click stuff, sorry. That's no, okay. Uh... I was going to click and hold and then open the door. I was, I was spoken. I mean, roll initiative. <laughs> um... <laughs> Dexterity saving throw. Dexterity saving throw. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I exactly. wasn't there. All to be. Perception check for me. Right. Perception check. Here we go. Where's my Where's my lucky dice? Let's go. And then I have a religion check I want to make. Scene. After this. This dice been really good to me. I like you. It's good. Blue color. Standing there. There is a there is a little keyhole uh, in the door, and you kind of look. You're trying to see. You can't really see. It's blocked on the other side. But as you get close, in a moment, in the moment where the rest of the team is like that, that you know those like moments of silence that happen where everyone just happens to be quiet at the same moment. You hear the faintest sound of of a melody. You just the same faintest little. Just like very soft sound carrying through the door. You can't tell. Um, you can't Does it tell. sound like person humming or more like an instrument playing? Um, it is difficult to tell whether it is someone singing or the echoes of dripping water in the great cavern. Mm. But it is a faint mm. melodious sound that finds you as you are as you are um, docking the door. Um, and what is your religion check here? I want to 
try to remember from my upbringing in a house of who worshipped Namtar, given mm-hmm. that that god clearly has some, either this is a temple to Namtar or Namtar had some importance to this civilization. Mm. Um, does anything in my remembrance connect with water, with like pools of water and rituals or r- a river of death? Like, like I'm thinking like the river Styx or like, oh, I'm just wondering if this water is important from a, from a, from that sense. Black Grief. Uh, that's, uh, seven. Oh. He's not my No guidance? <laughs> I um, think I myself, yeah. But I think I have to declare you, it. Oh. What's, the, what's the rule on that? No, you have to let, yeah, you have to say it before. I think. You need... In your in your in your in your of your experience with Namtar and, and and the religious spaces you've been to that like dedicated to her and the stories or and any little religious paraphernalia you've come across, you've never heard of, of like bodies of water being dedicated to her. But you do see that there is again there is severe damage to this place and it is a tropical rainforest. Um, and so it's just like there's just a lot of water, but that's because a lot of water collects here and then doesn't really get out. That's yeah. So it seems the rule is guidance is already active. You can roll it before or after the check, but mm. you need to, you need to have already put guidance on yourself, and then you could. Yes, then you could use that's it what I was gonna you say. Want. You need to you need yeah. to you need to cast it before doing any checks. That's what I can't retroactively. All right. Because yeah. um, I'm playing cleric in a different campaign, the same, <laughs> same fucking thing all the time. This is my first cleric. I'm, I'm still learning. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I'd be interested in just opening this door. I, I am too. All right. I think Gulliver is going to do that. Hey, uh, any reason I shouldn't just open this? Uh, Shorty sees what they're about to do, and he's going to try to find the highest ground he can. Well, I think yeah, you just no go boxes. the other way. There are no boxes. Want. There are no boxes. All right, three, two, one. Oh, oh it's ready, locked. Yeah. It's locked. It is locked. Okay. And and it's children from touching things you shouldn't be touching. That's All right, right. I'm gonna try to do the old one too. Hey, wait, just give me one moment. Um, okay. let me go check something. You need to uh, find the door. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Uh, you can roll a strength check for me. 22. Fuck yeah. There we go. So he's just going to do a classic, like, knock out a couple of the top timbers use the haft of his axe to like strip away and like just to kind of d- disassemble the the whole door because it's so waterlogged oh. cool you uh, back, you doing that Aries oh. comes back sorry <laughs> oh. Go ahead. Uh, he comes back like there's something there's some sort of melody over there <laughs> the melody somebody's uh-huh. over there but singing? I couldn't tell. Wow, we've already started. Some sort of melodic part. sound. No, yeah, like he's disassembling. I'm like, oh, there's more interesting stuff over there. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one thing at a time. Uh, talk back your axe. You thunk it into the door. You all hear as this, as the axe goes into the door. You all hear a deep groaning sound as the door suddenly basically explodes out um, with the with the force of this crack. Basically, the 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 axe cleaving the door, this the crack splits the door. Both halves burst open, and I need all of you to please make me. Um, this was a good idea. Uh, the best. Uh, please, I need all of you to please make me strength saving throws. I should have just passed guided myself. 
Strength, no. saving throw, plus three. Okay, plus three, not bad. Go. Eight, 18 for Gulliver. Okay. 19. Oh. So, so, so uh, let's do it this way. I um, love this dice. I love you. You're so good to me today. Gulliver. Mm hmm. Gulliver, you're going to take four points of. Mm, you're going to take four points of bludgeoning damage. Um, Octavia, you're going to take two points of bludgeoning damage. Jones, you take three points of bludgeoning damage. Octavia takes one. And then uh, Shorty, you take one point of bludgeoning damage. And then um, who rolled less than 15 on their strength saving checks? Uh, hold on. I don't know. Me. Okay. Who else rolled quite, less than a fifteen? Quite a bit under people? fifteen. You did. Yeah. Fifteen. So just just um Ford and Shorty? Yeah. Gulliver, uh Jones, you I guys did all 19, so, yeah. Okay. Um the sheer <laughs> volume of water that burst forth from this door uh basically pulls the doors off the hinges, they slam back opening. You all uh get pummeled with the various points of bludgeoning damage I deal to you, uh, I just gave you. Ford and Shorty get, uh, you You try to hold on at the last minute, but the force of the volume just absolutely knocks you back. You kind of like end up washed down the hallway, prone up toward the door that uh, Ares just came from. My sword. <laughs> How much you bludgeoning hear? did I, I and think I missed. Sword, and as, as the hilt of the sword, like, scratches on stone sliding up above you, immediately sinking under the water, but still getting pushed back. Uh, how much bludgeoning did I take, by the way? I think I missed that. Uh, four. 30 screams. No, you <laughs> took three. I took three? Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe I take well, you one. Little thing. Um... Is this a continuous, like, flow, or is it like an unleashing and then it seems to be going down. Um, the initial flood of it rushes past you all. Those of you who rolled higher than 15, you managed to hold your own as the water just kind of like, it's like almost like standing during a wave hitting you in the chest and you kind of barrel down and take the, the, the pressure of the water. Um, it slowly starts to flood out down the hallway that you um, that you just opened back in the other direction where you came from not a whole lot of it going upstream it goes upstream just because the sheer volume and force of it was like it needed to go somewhere but now as a few as a few moments go by it starts to come back down because again that that door further up uphill so the words start to come back down going down this hallway here after a moment you see the water start mm. So where do we end up? Seems like the crab friend will be happy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I place you more or less where you are. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. I, I, I don't know. Today's been a day, as you all uh, know. Uh, well, it's fine. um, it's fine. Ugh. I guess we can see what's in there. Mm -hmm. Is everyone okay? Oh, no. Can I? How high is the water? Um, no, but... as, you, as you look, as you all kind of like do one of those things where like one head popping up over the other, everyone trying to like rub her neck and see what's going on mm -hmm. with the room. Um, you see that just immediately after the door are a series of steps that go down. Now that the water has, um, has uh, had a, a release valve with the door being open now, the water is about as high as that first step, but you can see that there are steps going into the room ahead of you. Wait, wait. So the the we had the door. Oh, there's stairs going down, like kind of like down the in the basement, sort of. And the water is full of water. Basically, the room that you were in was flooded. Yeah. When all of, when when Gulliver opened the door, all of the excess water. Yeah. Like poured out 
Yeah. Now that the door is open, all of the excess water that was flooding has gotten to a point where now the water is level. So basically, the water is on the level. Like, think of it like you're at a beach. Yeah, and then the stairs are going down. So the into water is correct. Water. Into, the, into the, the water. Okay, got it. That's yeah. what I was asking. Okay, cool. Um, does do do we want to go under the water or check the one that the door with the melody? <laughs> do we have a way to go? Are you asking me? Um, no, I'm asking the, the group. I think so. I'm trying to get up. <laughs> trying to stand in this water. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, Dr. Ford's going to step up and walk over to the stairs. Um, you sloshing into the water now, Oliver. Like yeah. In, like, yeah. yeah. Or something. I'm, I'm splashing and splashing over here. Am I like swimming okay. or is it just like up to my like waist or something? Um, it's a deep room. Yeah. If you go all the way in, you're going to be in there. As you start to descend into the water, you start to feel kind of itchy. And you, you can tell that this water is painted with the same acid that is saturated Oof. into all the other moist surfaces. Okay. okay, in that case... You take, you take two points of acid damage and you go splashing and splashing in the water. That is... Okay. Yucky. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I guess, pushing forward to the door to try to open it. Well, the... the okay. Uh, you're trying to get this door here. Mm hmm Okay. You see this door looks like it is swollen outward. You can tell that this door was also kind of loaded out from the Like there might be the more water. water. Meaning convex towards us? Is it under the water? Is the door under the water? The, I mean, that... the door is cool. It's a tall door. Uh, but the, okay. the, the, the water is basically coming up to uh like your your rib cage high it's um mm -hmm. there are several steps down you're kind of in the water there so and this take... looks like it might burst is what you're saying this other door you, okay so as you're looking at it you realize that the room was flooded and both doors were bulging outward yeah. to contain the volume of water within and so this water okay. this door looks even more water damaged than the other one because it is lower than the door that you were just at. Does that make sense? So it's bulged towards the room that away we would from be you. entering away from us. Yes. Away from yes. us. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So then, so yeah, I will. In continue. this room, with pushing the doors out. Yeah. I will continue to attempt to push towards it. Then, um, I don't know as you how get much damage, that is. I want to use shape water <laughs> at the door mm. to move it out of the way to make it easier for you to get through that door and not have to be slogging through acid water. Sick. Yeah. So yeah. I can part the red I can sea. shape up to five foot cube of water. So that I feel like that'd be right where basically Gulliver's standing. Is that fair? A five foot cube? Five feet on each side. Yeah. yeah. Gulliver, how tall are you? <laughs> yeah. I'm like six. Yeah foot probably but it's not, imagine, yeah, it's like imagine a cube a cube and it's just this 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 part is like still in the water or something. yeah just the head <laughs> what a cube um but yeah the time it takes for to conjure the spell and bring the water away from you you take an additional two points of acid damage from standing in the water as you're looking over the door Cool. All right, I'm going to attempt to just, uh, well, first just open it normal style. It is locked. Okay, and then uh, break it down. Drink check. Eighteen. Thanks. Eighteen How do you break the door down? Uh. I bring my axe and kind of like just make a big hole in it. The water sort of starts to spray out and makes the hole bigger. Yeah, the door um, just kind of like swings lazily open as you finish opening the rest of the door. Before you, you see a hallway that descends downward and you see more water 
You see another gush of water escape going down the hallway um, uh, in the direction of the that the door just opened into. Great. All right, so should we go for the singer or deeper down? I'm kind of feeling like the singer, although this... Glad we kind of cleared this out a bit. Well, yeah. one question. Is that hallway also flooded? Is it? <laughs> is it flooded? Like, is There's it full water. of water? Or, or no, is there just water? For the... Okay. No. It has water in it now because, again, the water is yeah. escaping through the open door from the room that Gulliver's in. Yeah. So she'll say, do, do you want me to empty the rest of the water down that hallway? I mean, is it enough that it's like over our boots and will damage us? Is it like trickling room? away? Can we just like wait for it to kind of go? Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's lower down now because at this point oh. now the door on the bottom is open. So all of the water is kind of flowed out. Yeah, well, she was asking because the water is not, she's holding it back at this point because she's oh, created this five foot. Like, she's like, can I let it go, please? And it will go, or oh, am I going to yeah. make a bigger problem? <laughs> yeah. Because then we can walk through the room freely. Yeah. Not swim yeah. Through the room. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Just, uh, sort of <laughs> slide it down beneath, between my legs or something. I don't know. She can, she can shape it, says. Says I can cause the water to form into simple shapes and animate at my direction. So I can totally shape it in a way that it does not touch your feet. Great. But we'll head out of the room. Just AD can on the python. As Sweet. you're all water, standing there, water bending. Um, as you're all standing there, uh, you know, Ford is doing this really um really great job of shaping the water. It looks effortless. Um, and you're kind of watch, watching, it's almost like watching someone do ice sculpting. It's, it's like, or, or like water bending. She's cast the spell. The water has, has created almost like a fun shape and it's very neatly pouring down between Gulliver's legs. And you're all standing there for a moment. Um, and then uh, with all of the air motion as a result of all the water, a particularly strong gust of air comes up, you all start coughing and you take an additional four points of damage from, uh, of acid damage from the, of poison damage from the air. Yes. Waiting, standing there waiting and like, I mean, it's a really pretty thing to do, but it slows the amount of time it takes for the water to empty and you're all standing there waiting for the water to run out. There. <coughs> After maybe four or five minutes of Low controlled water pouring out. The room is now emptied. Most of the water having filed down the hallway ahead of Gulliver. Oh, not going to be muted, I think. Oh. There you go. Am I muted? No, you're good now. Okay. Uh, all right, so I guess now. We can keep going down this way. We probably just should, right? I mean, the melody thing, like, who did it sound like somebody was in trouble or some kind of time sensitive thing or somebody who's. No, it's kind of sounded like repetitive, repetitive melody. So I couldn't tell if it was a thing that was playing or a person humming. Mm. It was too faint to tell. So it feels like. It's not going anywhere. Doc Jones, what do you think? We keep going. All right. Let's see what's down this little rabbit hole. It's full of Came around the back. All right, everybody get over here. I'm going to open or try to open the door. No, I think you mean get out of the way. Cause... Yep. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm going to, yep. Oh, yeah. you're going to do something? I'm no, it's back. kind of like the way you, the, you, the way you keep opening doors keep causing damage. So we're going to stay. We're going to stay oh, the yeah. fuck away. <laughs> I see. Okay, that makes sense. 
All right. It's like we see another here. door. We see Gulliver coming to the door. We walk the fuck away. <laughs> <laughs> another door. I just, I, 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 a relentless pursuer of knowledge over here. Without much uh, real concern for my safety, but you know. Sometimes you do what you gotta do. <laughs> I do respect. Okay, is there more? Is All right, there what's more this water? room like? Yeah. yeah. Um, you you enter the room. You see more stairs going down. Um, really? Short hall ending and descending steps. So this is this is um this is a description almost in reverse. This is describing the room as if you were looking at it from the other side of the room. Uh, okay. As if you had entered from the doors on the other side. Okay. Um, we uh, weren't supposed to get here this way. Yeah. No, no, this is, <laughs> you did it totally fine. It's just that the module is not written to accommodate. No, totally. Like, yeah. Yeah. To do a room. That's why I have to take a while sometimes to parse through the, the text because the text assumes certain entry points from certain way in certain ways and yeah. like reverse engineer certain things. So I'm just going to read it to you as it's written, because it's a, it's a little chunk of text here. Um, and just because uh, in the thing, it says a short hall ending in descending stairs, you are on the descending stairs. Um, so as you look out over the room, you see a dark um, foul pool covered covers the entire floor. You see that it is now swollen with more water as a result of, of what you just released from the previous chamber. Uh, a central hall flanked by narrow aisles um, is defined by two rows of massive square columns. The walls are coated with slime. There are glowing silver lines etched across them. From what you can see of the chamber's walls, the stones appear to be crudely worked. Two corroded bronze braziers stand in the pool toward the middle of the room. Two broken urns, each one apparently once about four feet tall, poke up out of the water. Not, at this point, they're barely visible. Um, in the darkness, uh, on the eastern wall appears an enormous growth of an overall greenish hue that gives off the same silvery gleam as the slime trails. On the far end of the room, um, you see the you see the back side of the door that you had that Jones had been investigating earlier. Uh, that on this side you can see that it's more it's more tinted blue from oxidation. And then uh, just on the inside of the room from the far side, there are um, two small alcoves. Each space contains what looks from afar to be some sort of maybe like a water fountain. Um, uh, and that's what you can see from here. So let's put a pen in it here. We'll start the next game with an investigation of this room. That sounds good to you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you're saying is if we listened to Dr. Jones, we could have avoided all this water. Dr. Jones knows what he's talking about. I know nothing. Yeah. I am just, I am just a I'm just a crap. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's advantage to uh coming in from this direction. Yeah, I, I mean it's now, possible. Yeah, it, yeah, I can tell you Lucky. now that there was an advantage to coming in from this direction. There was. There was. Sick. There was a minor. I mean, yeah, because the thing is, if you had opened, if you had gone the other way, you would have come up the hallway, you would have opened the door, and you would have all been washed back into this room anyway. Uh, you would have taken more damage in that in that regard. Mm. Don't, 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 don't be really his sense. craziness, his crazy decisions. <laughs> He's over here trying to kill me. <laughs> no, no, I'm over here trying being brave. A Aries is thinking how how we can how we can start disassembling doors from the distance. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a great. Gulliver's <laughs> open to that, certainly. Oh, we totally forgot again to say hello to our audience. <laughs> And to introduce ourselves. Hello. 
This is part of the plan. If you made it this far, you deserve to know who we are. Yeah, you do. I like our flip of saying hello. At the I mean, end. we can yeah, we can know, we can yeah, yeah. we can start expect. from here, like where you said, like, oh, we forgot, and you can just cut it and put it also in the in the beginning. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not doing that. But this is uh, introduce yourselves. We'll start here in the room, one off, and then E. Hi, I'm Bueno. I play Shorty Rotundo. He is a uh, um. Uh, a good friend is what I hope he be. He is um, to uh, Dr. Jones, who guides him uh, in his search to be a great person such as him and a great uh, archaeologist. You are a. I, oh, got it. He is a halfling uh, sorcerer. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Hello, I'm Esteban. I played. Dr. Walton Jones III, he is a human variant ranger, uh, archaeologist, finder of things, preserver of history. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do Brian, Michael, Tamara. Sure. I am Brian, and I play Dr. Arabella Ford. She is a high elf nature cleric of Niner Sag, which is a secret that now this little group of characters knows, but no one else does. Uh, she was also a former um, army medic, so has some medical training, uh, and um, her day job is a so much an archaeologist, more of a biologist, um, but also it, like a historical biologist. She, she goes into ancient places and catalogs and studies plants and animals there. What's next? <laughs> I am Michael Carter. I play Gulliver Prendergast, who is a graduate student uh, whose thesis advisor is Dr. Jones. Um, he is, he's got a lot of rage in his heart. He's a wild magic barbarian, um, you know, academic job market and all that. Uh, and yeah, he studies magic and try is going to be, you know, hopefully a historian and archaeologist. He hopes to surpass Dr. Jones one day. Ooh, Ooh I like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I'm Tammy. I also known as Tamara because uh, Eric calls me sometimes like that. So don't be confused. That's still me. Um. I play an Air Genasi monk. Uh, his name is Ares Claude Walker. Um, he is a monk of uh, the Way of Shadows, I think it's called. Um, he He's from a very secluded temple that's uh, following the the ways of shadows and secrets and all of that. and he um, ran away kind of to find himself and been traveling from one temple to another until, um, what are the, the Dreadveil Cabal um, desecrated the temple that he was visiting, killing the, a, a friend that he made there and was sent to to kind of like, find um, whatever the Cabal is looking for and try to save that from them, wherever it is. Um, and he stumbled upon this group. And yeah, and here we go. <laughs> Instant friends. Making friends. Hello, I'm Marty. I'm your, I'm your story DJ. I'm giving, I'm DMing this, this game. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's what I do. I guess that's it. That's what you guys trying to kill us. That's what she's like. Not even with monsters, just with water. <laughs> yeah, like just, just with, with water. Yeah. Walls. <laughs> she just likes acid. Yeah, I just I just people with tears, with the tears on, on my enemies. My, and my, poison my, enemies. The water my bad guys, poison. my monsters' tears destroy you. This is like Appalachian coal mining, the D and D game. <laughs> 
I am I am <laughs> curious. I'm sure this is wrong, but I am curious if the source of the poison gas or whatever is in this mm. room. That's if if it's not if it's being tainted by something, and if we could actually clear like, it, cure it, or oh it, my god, purify it, oh, or purge it, or I something. Haven't I haven't even thought of that. That's so cool. I'd be totally wrong, but that'd be really cool. That thing's I've big. never played this module. I have, so no, I have no idea. idea. Like, I'm, everyone's just like, oh, look yeah. what I did for my friends. I'm like, oh, that sounds so weird. And she's like, want to join? I'm like, sure. <laughs> so I have <laughs> no idea, like, about <laughs> anything, about anything. I'm just jumping in and that's it. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, really? I'll admit the thought crossed my mind as well. I haven't. Um, I, I was more of like, Please tell me I don't have to swim in this water. That's it. You don't have to swim in acid water? Why not? Poison mm -hmm. water? I'd... It's good for your skin. It exposes. Oh, it's fully. It's, it's fully. Yeah. I might have to Airy, burn it. Airy and her love yeah. acid. <laughs> it's just, it's so good for your skin. You're going to feel it's so good. Mm -hmm. no, I prefer salt scrubs. Your skin's really well. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap. All right. Uh, thank Night. you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Um, we'll catch you again in two weeks. We'll see you after work. Bye. Bye. After work. Bye. See you after work. <laughs>